हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू स्वीटी स्पीक्स ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल टूडे टॉपिक इज इवेंट इन सिस्टम वेरी लॉग लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड वॉट डू वी मीन बाय इवेंट इन सिस्टम वेरी लॉग इवेंट इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट हैंडल विच मीन्स इट्स एन हैंडल टू एन ऑब्जेक्ट एंड वॉट डज दिस ऑब्जेक्ट हैंडल हेल्प अस टू डू it helps us to synchronize between two active processes in system verilog there will be multiple processes active at a time these processes can run in sequence or they can run in parallel as you have specified in your test and it is possible that one of the process runs on one clock and another process runs on another clock if this is the case it is possible that you miss some important signal values in these processes because they both are running at different clock how do we resolve this problem this problem can be resolved by doing synchronization one way to do the synchronization in system verilog is with the help of event as i said event is an object handle which helps to synchronize between two active processes in these two active processes the first process will be the process which triggers your event and the second process will be the process which waits for your event this event in system verilog can be assigned to you can assign it to null or you can assign it to another event the event can be passed to queues or tasks or function wherever you require these events in these constructs you can pass it now how do you trigger and wait for the event in order to trigger your event you can use any one of these two operators what are these operators what is difference between these two operators we are going to see for now remember to trigger an event you have two different operators to choose from and to wait for the event you can use at the rate operator or you can use dot triggered these are two ways there is another construct which says wait order wait order waits for the events to occur in a particular order say for example i want event a to occur first and then event c so i will say wait order a comma c which means wait until event a occurs and then event c occurs now what is the difference between these two constructs which can be used to trigger an event this is the first construct this construct is used for named events and the second construct is used for non blocking events the second construct executes in nba region of the time slot we had discussed about system verilog regions in system verilog essential series on the same youtube channel if you have not gone through it please go through it so that you understand what are different regions in system verilog and nba region is one of those and ba region stands for non blocking assignment in which the lhs of the non blocking assign will get the value in detail you please refer the sv regions video lecture there you are definitely going to understand about each and every region which is possible in a given time slot now remember that this particular operator is going to execute in your nba region of the time slot the second operator behaves as good as a delayed version of your first operator between at the rate and dot triggered which can be used to wait for your event at the rate what happens when you use at the rate if both the trigger event and the wait condition if both of them are occurring at the same time then race condition can occur when you are using at the rate 
if both trigger and wait condition occur at the same time. One way to avoid this race condition is when you are using at the rate, you use at the rate with this construct. Don't use at the rate with this construct. If you remember this, the first operator can produce the race condition when used with at the rate. And this operator is a delayed version of this operator. So when you are using this operator along with at the rate, the race condition will be avoided. Dot triggered. Dot triggered will help you in avoiding the race condition because it will wait for the event to get triggered in the wait condition. So race condition won't occur when you are using dot triggered. Only when the event is triggered, then the wait condition will get satisfied. Now, what are different operations that can be performed in event? The first one is merging. You can merge two events by assigning one event to another event. If one event is triggered, then the other event will automatically be triggered. Why? Because you have assigned one event to another event. Say for example, you have two events, event A and B. And you have assigned A equal to B. It means whenever B is triggered, A will also get triggered. Another operation which is possible between events is comparison. Comparison if two events are equal or unequal. How we can do this? Using the equality operators. A equal to equal to B means A is equal to B. Both the events are equal. It's checking. A not equal to B. It means we are checking whether the event is no. A is not equal to B. This is about the events in system variable. Now let's see a coding example. Let's understand this example. I have a module event example. In this, I have three different events A, B and C. I have two tasks. One task is to trigger the event. If you see in the first task, I am giving a delay of 10 after which I am triggering my event A. And then I am displaying event A is triggered. After that, I have a second task waiting in which I have given a delay of 5 and I am waiting for event A. Afterwards, I am displaying that event A is observed. Then I have initial begin block in which I have fork join. In case you have not gone through, we have discussed about fork join in detail in system Verilog essential playlist. I am going to share the link in description. Please go through that. In short, what happens in fork join? Whatever lines you have in fork join, all of them execute in parallel. In our case, we have two tasks which we have called in fork join. So both these tasks are going to run in parallel. The first task is going to complete at 10 because you see here we have a delay of 10 and this doesn't have any delay. So overall it will complete at a delay of 10. The second task, first we are giving a delay of 5 and then we are waiting for A. A will occur after a delay of 10. So second task will also complete after a delay of 10. Now let's run this and we will see the output. What I am expecting at a delay of 10, event A will be triggered. Event A is triggered at a delay of 10. Then here I am waiting for 5 and then waiting for the event. So event A has occurred at 10. That's why event A observed I am getting at 10 because I was waiting till event A is occurred and it occurred at 10. Now let's do one thing. Here let me give a delay of 10 instead of 5. So what happened? Your event A is going to trigger at 10 and you are also waiting for the event A after a delay of 10. So let us run this.
now here if you see only event a is triggered only this much we get we did not observe the event why because here the triggering event occurs at 10 and the waiting event also occurs at 10 due to which there is a race condition in the triggering and waiting event we had discussed about this now how can i avoid this race condition one way is instead of this construct what i am going to use i am going to use this construct if you remember this will be the delayed version of the first construct now let us run it now we get both event a is triggered and event a is observed because of using this construct now let me do one thing i'll create another task what i am going to do now i am going to assign event b to a particular value so i'll name this task as assign b and what i am going to do here i am just going to assign b equals a that's it now when you assign b equals a Okay, you are triggering A, but when A is triggered, B should also be triggered. So if I replace this at the rate A with at the rate B, and I will say event B is observed. Let me run this. K here you need to give semicolon and here you also need to call this task assign B. Now let's run this. What happened? Event A got triggered but event B was observed. Why? Because you have assigned the event b to event a so whenever event a is triggered event b will also be triggered now i have also created a task to trigger the event c after 15 delay i am triggering the event c and displaying that event c is triggered after that in task waiting i am waiting for the event c i am waiting for 15 delay and then waiting for event c and here I have also called trigger C. Let us run this. At the delay of 10, my event A was triggered. At the delay of 15, my event C was triggered. But my event C is never observed. Why? Here if you see at the delay of 15, your event C is triggered. And also after waiting for delay 15, I am again waiting for event C. So again there is a race condition. We had seen one way to avoid it. Instead of this operator, we will use this operator. Now let us see another way to avoid it. I am keeping this operator as it is. But here instead of at the rate, I am using wait C dot triggered. Now let's see. Let's run this and see. So, with this, instead of using at the rate, I am using triggered. With this, the race condition is avoided and I am able to observe my event C. Now, let us do one thing. Here, I am going to compare. If your event A is not equal to event C, then you will display A and C are unequal. Now let's again run this. A and C are unequal. Now the next thing which we can do is 
here we have wait for c dot triggered now what i will do i'll wait for the order of events i'll comment all this out and what i will do wait underscore order i want first my event a to occur and then i want my event c to occur and when both these events occur then what i am going to do i am going to display a and c events have occurred now let's run this event a got triggered event c got triggered but i am not able to see a and c events have occurred why here if you see i am waiting for delay 15 and then again i am waiting for a and c but a will occur after a delay of 10 so while you are waiting for delay 15 a has already occurred and same happened with c this is the problem that's why you need to reduce this delay in such a way that A and C occur after this delay. That's why you have to reduce this delay to less than 10 so that A and C both occur after this delay. That's why I'm going to make it as 9 and then I'm going to rerun it. Now let's rerun it and then I'm expecting that I will also get A and C events have occurred. Let us see if we are able to get this display statement A and C. A and C have occurred. It means you can also use wait order but ensure that before you use wait order the event should not have already occurred and went. Then you, your wait order will not happen. I hope with this you are now very clear with events in system very low. Practice all these codes and to stay tuned please subscribe to Sweetie Speaks official YouTube channel. Thank you.